past this uh, a few times so far. Uh, there will be two videos a week, uh, start of the week, which is, say, a Monday or Tuesday, or end of week, which would be a Friday or Saturday. That makes sense to me. And so basically around that time, you would look for videos to be coming out from me. Uh, so this one right now, since it's on a Friday, is the end of the week. And what we have right here, as you can see, is Bitcoin. Now I want to go back and I'm going to show Ethereum next and some of the other coins too. I'm going to go through them briefly uh, to update everybody uh, on yeah, my ideas of where I think the market's going to go. Back here, if you remember me telling you last week, I was looking for a drop. Uh, I hedged. Uh, the volume up here was very, very active, even though you don't see it as active as this because this was when the actual... SBF story came out, but there were all kinds of indicators that something was going on and I was getting reports from people that they were having issues like with FTX and um, This is also after the Do Kwan news that happened earlier uh, So the market's been in a negative rut for a while so I did hedge um, at 21k area right up here and I was looking for us to go to 15,800, that happened. I bought that, then I sold short again when we hit 18K. So this trade is an XY trade. And so this is a very simple trade. If you see the spike down, we had the first one, and then the shelf that we created right here. Then the next one down, that was your exaggeration. You can see it's on lower volume. So high volume on that first spike, lower volume on this one right here, and it hit the major level. This is, uh, well, not the major major, this is the in-between level. But this is a logical level from 15,800 back to 18K. That's the in-between, just like uh, you have your 21K and then your 24K, which is right over here somewhere, right? Yeah, okay. So those are your levels that you're looking at. The next major level, again, I'm going to repeat this. This is your major level down here at the uh, low 14K. I believe it's around 1456, I believe it is. And this is a major level. This is um, akin to, uh, I wouldn't say the 24K, I would say more closer to the 33K. Uh, level up here uh, because this is uh, the level of which uh, the rubber meets the road, I guess you can say. Uh, it is a, going to be a big point of interest and if we get spikes under it, it's going to return to this and likely even back to 15.8 uh, and then back to here. We'll see what develops. Right now we're waiting for this trend line to fully uh, either break um, which is more likely, and then go down to here, our 14K, if some other news comes out. We are really oversold, um, and uh, the volume is just, it's, again, not really interesting. Um, but I'm holding out for this. This is my next buy point. Uh, and let's go take a look at Ethereum. And we can see this hit levels up here. Now this was one, uh, it's key points. I don't think I pointed this out. I'm gonna point them out now. The low 900 range is the next number down under uh, this uh, 1080s, somewhere in there, the 1080 range down here. I think it's a 1085, uh, 1085. And then you have uh, around 904, 903, somewhere in that range right there. Um, outside of the uh, 1600, 16, 1700 uh, dollar range up here, uh, what we look for, it went down to here, bounced twice off of here perfectly, uh, came back into this zone. Now this has turned into resistance right now. And we did get a break, and we tested back up to it, 
and now we're deciding what we're going to do. This whole area now is now resistance. So let's change the color. Let's make it yellow. It's not really hard resistance, but it is turning to be a cautionary zone. Um, and the next zone down is going to be down here to here. Ultimately, this is your bigger zone right here, the 900. And uh, we'll see what kind of activity we get. That's what I would be looking for because that's what the, the chart says. Now let's go to XRP and take a look at it. Nothing exciting, nothing interesting at all. And there's nothing for me to really do. Uh, the 32 cent range was its bottom point down here. And oh, where are my lines showing up on here? Okay, well, it's up to trading view. I'll wait for them to fix that. I guess I'm missing some lines. But anyway, uh, this is your support point down here at 32 to 38. There's really nothing for me to do in this, uh, but hold. Uh, you know my feelings on this one. It's not even one that I really want to trade because it, it could fly uh, very easily. It's downside, in my opinion, you can see it's very congested most of the time. It doesn't make gigantic moves. At 40 cents down the 32, that's not horrible. Even with the news that you had, we were in the 50 cent range and um, things were looking good. Looks like we were going to break to 60, 70 up to here and then we hit you know the the bad news from about SBF and you know we had a, we had to deal with a lot of crap to put it bluntly uh, from outside factors that have nothing to do with the cryptocurrencies themselves but rather these uh, uh, incompetent and fraud oriented people um, and uh, it's unfortunate but we're Maybe they're just really, like they say, they like to you know, believe that they're just really stupid. Um, I find that a little hard to believe that they don't have any risk mechanisms whatsoever, but a lot of these people aren't really from the financial sector. They don't have any real background in banking or risk control or risk management. If you're going to own a, a, an exchange, don't you think you want to hire some risk managers from the financial sector and, and banking and brokerages? Um, make it lucrative for them to help you out and uh, as well as making sure that you are secure your, your money and you protect it. How about just some friggin' common sense? Really irritates me. But anyway, um, uh, here's one with Matic. I've had a few people ask me about this because they had more than 100% profit uh, on this. And it spiked all the way up to the 130, uh, $1 and 30 range. And if you were a buyer in the, anywhere from in this range, anywhere close to here, I happen to have a really good buy spot on this. Let me see how close I was to the bottom. It was very, very close. 31 cents and what was I in the 33 uh, cent range. Anyway, um, you can see what this represents down here uh, and what I was looking for, if you remember, the 88.6. Again, I'm gonna, this is history if you go back through the videos from the past. The 88.6% level on a lot of these altcoins is what I was looking for. And this was perfect. This is, uh, had its first spike move down here and then its second one went right to the 88 and then we bounced all the way back up. So 100% return. Some people it could have gotten far more than that. But let's not be greedy. If you are able to get a 100% return on your trade, right? Remember my, my uh, ideology, my philosophy. Um, so I buy something for a dollar and it goes up to $2. And I take out my original investment my what I risked on this. Um, I can't lose, right? And then I have whatever's left from there. Uh, if it keeps going up, great, then profits will increase. 
but there's no risk. So you made a risk-free trade. That's the whole ideology. Can't lose money by taking profits is the old adage. But uh, when you do a 100% return, uh, you basically doubled your investment. You take out the original one, and then if it goes back down, then you can start buying again, or um, it might go higher in, you know, in the future. Who knows what Matic might be worth. But we hit the 88.6, and that was its major buy level down here. Um, just like Dogecoin, Dogecoin had a recent buy level that was down in the six cent range, and its previous one was in the around the eight down here, and we kind of turn into resistance in this whole range up here. But it, it's so crazy the way this moves, and any tweet that Elon Musk comes out with, and this is one of the reasons I don't put a great deal of money into um, these altcoins. Um, they're fun to trade, but man, they're, it's just like uh, you're waiting for some news or something to, to happen. Um, and this spiked all the way up to 15 cents. And you've seen the roller coaster ride that the Dogecoin has got, been on. Uh, so there's not, I don't have to go over and repeat that. Uh, one of the interesting ones is Litecoin. And Litecoin's gotten a lot more interest. I guess they're having is, um, uh, when is that, August of next year, and people are focused on that. I think it's been tapped out, and I, I said that this had the perfect geometry and volume, the way it moved down here for this target up here for just a trade. So if you would have taken this trade down here, anywhere in this range from 47 all the way to 42, um, all the way back to above the $71 range, the mid 71, right around here, um, you had a great trade. And now it's currently trading in the, even in the, the, the mid 80 range and to the, the mid 70s range. So we're above that, which is great. But uh, yeah, Litecoin is one of the ones that people are looking at in the future to, to hang out and to be back uh, and its ranking and, and to uh, take the place of maybe some of these DeFi coins like Solitana, who I personally like Sol. Um, I had another buy down here. I'm not sure if you guys seen that one because of everything that's been going on. I haven't been really present the past few months because of the issues that we had in the channel, but no problem. Uh, if you see the buy that's down here, uh, this is right around the $14 range. And uh, this was the first one, which I thought was a great buy in the 26, but um, so much for that. Uh, at some point when we do go back to the upside, these are the numbers ahead that we're looking at in the 80 all the way up to the 109, I believe it's 108, 109 up to here. Um, this has a long history of uh, just crazy numbers. I had shorts all the way up here when it was, you know, this is <laughs> uh, very active in the past. Right now we're in consolidation. When you see these long flat lines like this that you see right here, it's very uninteresting. It's not very uh, good to trade other than the, the buy and hold uh, if you believe in its future, um, which I kind of do. Uh, if you notice the volume that's here, it's extreme. People are very scared because of the whole SBF and the, uh, everything that's going on. But uh, I, I can't put a lot of money into it. It's an altcoin, but I, I like this one. So we'll see what happens with it. Um, and let's, what's another one? Dot. Dot is kind of meandered under this, uh, the 88.6, and it's built a, uh, it's kind of ugly, but it's not super, uh, there's nothing really super interesting in the, the volumes kind of tempered. So, you know, there's nothing, it's just following the general market. Um, what I like is Avalanche. I still like this one down here. And it, it too, like uh, that um, is just tempered, it's under its 88.6, and there's nothing really to see. 
Um, there was some interesting activity the other day, and I kind of think this one might spike, it might have news or something in the background, but something's going on. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it had some positive uh, divergences in, in the, the volume, the way it moved. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, other than that, we got Uni. And this went all the way down to here, and it spiked all the way up to almost $10, all the way up to here real fast. But then pulled all the way back down to here. So it's in the middle, but this is another strong one. And we'll see if these come back. Uh, now these are kind of out there. And I'll go through some more of them. I'll go through the list that I had from earlier uh, of some of these altcoins. And we'll go uh, and take a look at, uh, you know, even more of them. Uh, there's so many. I got so many different coins in the altcoin area. But I, I'm not a big fan. And uh, my primary coins, 90 to 95% of everything that I have is in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or um, XRP. Uh, those are the major three. And uh, from there, if I put a few percentage or 5% even into all the altcoins in total, you know, that that is enough to me. Um, because uh, those are, those are, that's some... Um, those do not, those aren't the big guys. Uh, and I like the blue chips when it comes to the market. And that's my philosophy. Now, I'll go briefly over silver. Silver's moved back up, up to here. Again, I think at some point we're going to pull back to the 21, but let's see if we can get all the way back up to around 24 from right here. We have retested this top right here, the first top. So its pattern is very decent. And I was looking at a, a volume. You can't see it on TradingView here, but I was looking at volume from um, the you know, the uh, commodities realm. And uh, it's definitely in line. It's, it has very good uh, dynamics uh, with the way it's moving, uh, its geometry and, and movement and everything. So. I would think there's a good chance from the above the 2350s to, uh, for us to get back to under 21. Uh, so I'd look for that to her. Even if I'm bullish on silver longer term, I'm just talking about the short term, uh, us getting back to this point. It might spike up above there, uh, throw the market off. But ultimately, I do think we'll get back down to here and then we'll continue higher because the inflation that we have, you, you know, history has shown that silver and gold will go higher. And I think Bitcoin and, you know, crypto should join and join it as well. But we'll see. Now, if you notice, too, also with the $60 price cap that the everybody agreed on in NATO and the U.S., um, we briefly traded all the way down to around seventy dollars a barrel on uh, crude, so that's a good sign. Uh, and right now it, we're in the winter time, so people don't. Um, you're you're not going to see uh, spikes in the oil. They usually happen more in the summer. I think it's more active, and uh, you know, some places you, you kind of close down when, you, especially if you're in a snow oriented place um, so that that's just seasonal type of activity and but there's also another reason I think that's going to hit is that electric cars are becoming more and more I see them all over the place where I live and now there are more than one brand of the Teslas were the domineering brand but the past few years the past I'd say one in reality there are so many other brands now Prius, Toyota just released uh, the the Prius that has a 57 mile range. It's a hybrid, so it runs on both gas and electric, and uh, has a 57 mile range. Now the average range for people driving commuting on a daily basis is around um, 30 something miles, let's say. 
Uh, so if you plug in your car overnight and you use just the electric and your cost is one-tenth of what the cost is for gas, uh, it kind of makes sense. So if you get more cars like this, and uh, by 2025, I think it is, China and uh, some other countries, they're going to have a higher degree of cars running on electric. Um, it, it's, it's, it's going to start having an impact on oil. And we'll see. Uh, you know, with the global, you know, with the war in Ukraine, uh, we'll see what happens. It, it's kind of crazy right now. So you can never say, but, you know, because you might have OPEC try to, uh, but it, it's so difficult because now they have to go over since the Democrats won in, in the U.S. Uh, they, they have a position of weakness. If the Republicans had won, then it would be a different story. It's a crazy world. Um, the geopolitical, how they interact and, uh, and flip back and forth is just insane but um, right now uh, oil is going down which is a good thing and people will have more money and people are becoming really cost conscious in the US uh, they're um, they're buying more online that I know for a fact and uh, but there's still a lot of foot traffic in stores so we'll see what the sales are after Christmas but I have a feeling that they're not going to be as great as what people are thinking because I think a lot of people are just going out and looking at what they want to buy and then buying it online, which is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, so that this is the update for this uh, the end of the week. And uh, I'll go through some of the altcoins. I'll take a look and I'll come up with some educational videos. I'm going to do some like snapshot videos. Uh, of just good practices and they're going to be brief and to the point and you know I, I think uh, on individual subjects like dollar cost averaging or um, you know the psychology you know the, the way of thinking uh, so you don't go crazy when you get these market moves up or down um, I think that would be useful so anyway uh, I will bid you adieu. I hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you guys back on Monday or Tuesday. I'll have another update, just only a few days away. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.